Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining the uh, symposium. So basically, I will share some study we work on uh, last several years, which uh, we focus on coronavirus host infection, uh, which is an uh, antagonism of innate immune responses by coronavirus non-structural proteins. So why we think the interaction is important? Because we think the outcome of uh, the infection, like COVID-19, which is a disease, it's a kind of uh, a combination of a viral infection and a host uh, innate immune response. Okay, so give you a brief uh, list of uh, talk uh, today. So majorly, I will talk uh, several four topics. The first is an overview of a coronavirus uh, non-structural protein. The second is the study of the SARS-CoV-2 in pain microbiology, which we started the project. The third part will, will overview accumulation of double strand cause antiviral response. So the last part will share our studies, which we focus on the ASP1 and the ASP15 antagonists, the unit in the pathways. Okay, let's go through one by one. I think Susan already talked a lot about uh, those uh, uh, coronavirus, how it uh, produce uh, the viral proteins, how those protein was processed. So I mainly just go through the protein, what we know. Uh, maybe Susan already tell you a lot of uh, focus on the non-structural protein, which you can see the ASP1 protein, uh, it's a promote cellular mRNA degradation. And ASP2, actually, we don't know the function. There's a little studies. The ASP3 have a multiple functions. It's a very large protein. Have uh, two ubiquitination-like domains, maybe have a deubiquitination function or pan-like proteins, which process the viral polyproteins, and ADRP proteins may be, have a function to suppress the in, uh, immune uh, cytokine response. Uh, the NSP4 is scaffold protein, uh, mainly help to form the double uh, membrane vesicle for the viral replication. Uh, NSP5 is the 3C-like proteinase. NSP6 is scaffold protein, maybe similar function as NSP4, NSP7 is a replication complex protein with uh, not a well-defined function. NSP8 is a, a replication complex protein, which is a premise, which is important for the replication of the viral genome or subgenome RNA. NSP9 is RNA binding protein. Uh, also, we didn't know very well about the uh, function. Uh, NSP10 is a cofactor of NSP14 and 16. So NSP12, uh, which is RDRP, Susan talked a lot, uh, which is also target uh, therapy uh, for the gallate uh, remdesivir uh, to suppress replication. NSP13 have a two function, the RNA's helicase or 5 prime trophosphatase, which is important for the uh, RNA capping. Uh, NSP14 is N7 mesotransferase, also important for the mRNA capping. Uh, also contains uh, XON, which is a proof reading enzyme improve uh, the replication fidelity. NSP14 or uh, 15 is uh, endo yield, which I will share you some result of what we found. Uh, this protein have a multiple function also. NSP16 is a tool mesotransferase, also uh, important for the capping and uh, invade uh, unit immune response. Okay. So what I already mentioned, or Susan mentioned, uh, remdesivir and Coleman also mentioned, these are clinical trial or uh, drugs, which in Chinese we call the people's hope. We hope these drugs can actually fight against the virus, then give us some hope. Okay. Uh, so uh, here we, in pain microbiology, we are starting the project focus on SARS-CoV-2, which is a brand new virus. So we are growing viral stock, which uh, it's the first isolates of the United States from a Washington State patient. So we prepare seed stock, which can go to uh, 10 million PFU per meal, and this show very nicely plugged uh, in the viral E6 cell. Now we have a large working stock, uh, which is uh, 20 million PFU per meal. So you can imagine this stock can infect hundreds of millions of people. Uh, so uh, we already have uh, some project, like uh, also Paul mentioned, uh, we, we are isolate uh, character vi virus from patient, uh, which now is uh, uh, ad admitted in hospital of University of Pennsylvania, and we want to develop, uh, uh, develop rapid diagnosis methods, so we want to study the viral kin kinetics in the patient. 
we want to establish the cellular animal model to investigate the pathogenicity of the virus. And we want to also screen anti antiviral drugs and neutralize antibodies with a lot of collaboration uh, of group in Penn or uh, micro or microbiology department also Penn vet. Okay, so those are the double-strain RNA stimulate pathway. So we know double-strain RNA was recognized as a non-cell molecule once it's accumulated. It's through uh, MD5 maps or RF3 to in induce interferon. Also, it's also active in OS RNA cell pathways induce translational shutdown of cell death. Double strain RNA is also recognized by PKR and through PER to induce translational shutdown. Okay, so uh, what we know, uh, the virus, you know, they, they are not allowed the immune response. So we, what we learned, coronavirus try to suppress interferon production. So in our research, we found that the NSP1 of MHV uh, is a pathogenic factor that promotes viral replication by suppressing interferon of production in the liver. So the first question we ask, is NSP1 is a liver-specific determinant of a pathogenesis? Um, so we have a three viral strain in our in Susan's lab, actually, uh, WA59 and SD. So if you look at the liver replication, WA59 replicated very well, but SD is, cannot detect the replication. If we look at the viral sequence, we found actually there's a residue in ASP1, uh, position 194. WU and A59 is uh, lysine, and SD is arginine. So is this mutation affect the viral replication? So, then we compare other uh, coronavirus like SARS, COVID-2, MERS, uh, with uh, MHV, you can find all other coronavirus. This residue is licensed, and only SD is arginine, such as to make the, uh, keep this uh, license very important. So when we check the viral replication, you can see we use the reverse genetics uh, mu mutate the K to R in WU strain. So the wild type virus replicated very well in the liver, but the mutant virus attenuate. If you look at another virus, A59, again, the wild type virus replicated well, the k 2 r mutations attenuate. So interestingly, if we, we mutate the, the R arginine to K of ST virus, we can partially restore the liver replication. So in this part, we conclude ASP1 contributed liver pathogenesis by promote viral replication in the liver. So, then we ask, how does NSP1 promote MHV replication? Uh, so we use the bone marrow derived macrophage. If we look at interferon production, the wild type WU induces non-detectable interferon, but the K2R mutation induces a hundredfold higher. If we check another A59 strain, similarly, wild type virus induces very little interferon, and the K2R mutation induces a lot. So, interesting, the SD virus, if we put arginine to K, mutation, the virus induces much less than the wild type virus. So if we put the virus in bone marrow derived macrophage, you can see the B6 mice derived BMM, the NSP1 mutant virus attenuate. If we put an infra knockout BMM, they replicate to the similar level. So this is suggests uh, MHV NSP1 promote viral replication by suppression of interferon production. So the last part, uh, we are going to uh, ASP15. We found ASP15 is a pathogenic factor that antagonizes substrate recognition by receptor, thereby reduce activation of antiviral pathway. So as I mentioned, uh, the first question is ASP1 is pathogenic factor. Again, show you ASP1 is an endoreptic nucleus. This uh, conserves catalytic uh, uh, residue. We muted H to A. So we get uh, ASP1, uh, ASP15 wild type and H to A mutant. So we put uh, the again the virus in bone marrow derived macrophage. You can see the wild type induces a little interferon, but uh, the ASP1, ASP15 mutant induces a lot more. So if we put it in the liver from different mouse, so the ASP15 mutant uh, not detectable infra is partially uh, uh, restored, but MD5 mutation is not detectable. So this suggests other double strain RNA pathways involved. Okay, so reminding you again, there's a three major pathways, MDE5 to induce interferon, OS induce RNA cell, and PKR induce translational shuttle. So 
so we put uh, the virus either in RSO, uh, knockout derived macrophage, or PKR knockout derived macrophage. So you can see there's uh, only little uh, restore, but if you put uh, the DKO, we see fully restored. So for this part, we think ASP15 contribute a rap viral replication by invasion double strand recognition pathway. So finally, we found uh, how this ASP15 antagonist double strand stimulate pathway. We found actually uh, this protein has suppressed double strand production. You can see the wild type virus produce a little more, and the mutant virus produce a lot more double strand. So for those, we conclude ASP15 suppress double strand accumulation in the cells, thereby attenuate uh, activation of double strand pathways. Okay, for those I, I summarized, uh, first we found ASP1, which is suppressed type 1 interferon production, and we found ASP15, which is suppressed double strand accumulation to stop the activation of the pathway. Okay, uh, I thank uh, all the members in Wise Lab and our collaborator, Silverman Lab. Okay, thank you.